James Bond is described as a sharp, charming womanizer, the hero of thrilling spy novels and movies. Welcome to Chit Chat History, and today I'll be sharing seven top secret facts about the author of the James Bond franchise. The name's Fleming, Ian Fleming, although he would never actually reveal that as a properly trained intelligence officer. So let's dive into our declassified files on Fleming. Part Scottish, rather wealthy, and loved to travel, he learned several languages and made important connections in high places. And he was said to be charming, eloquent, and intelligent. In 1939, Fleming was recruited into the Naval Intelligence, so although he wasn't in MI6, he was involved in the world of international spy agencies through his position in the Navy. Fleming was, just as Bond, known for his unusual behaviour and tactics. Everyone else interrogated the German officers, but he once took them out for a fancy dinner, got them so drunk, and then only had to bring his notepad along. As part of his career, he became a personal assistant to Admiral John Godfrey, head of the British Naval Intelligence. During World War II, Fleming became a liaison officer and was later sent to the US. It is here that he assisted with the creation and foundations that led to the CIA in America, or the Office of the Coordinator of Information as it was originally known. Fleming trained for some time at a special operations executive secret base called Camp X in Canada. Located on the shores of Lake Ontario, this camp was basically a spy training camp, as you could imagine from the Kingsman movies. They learned communication in code, sabotage techniques, intelligent gathering, lock picking, explosive training, radio communications, the art of silent killing, and unarmed combat. Ian Fleming also attended Camp X with Roald Dahl, who later became a famous English author too. You may have heard of his Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Dahl actually went on to adapt two of Fleming's novels into screenplays, James Bond, You Only Live Twice, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Bonus fact, Ian Fleming actually wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as well as James Bond. Talk about two very different audiences. During his time in naval intelligence, Fleming met numerous men that later acted as models for the character he was later to create. Fleming himself admitted that the books were 90% based on his personal life and that Bond was a compound of all the secret agents and commando types I met during the war. The major difference between Fleming and his character of James Bond is that whilst 007 was keen to go out on missions and get in on the action, Fleming rarely took part in active field operations. As a commander, he knew too much and was far too valuable to lose. So he essentially got stuck in a desk job. A pretty important desk job though it was. He was almost the brains behind the agents. As the strategic planner and intelligence officer, he would organise these missions and deal with all the intelligence an agent would extract. Fleming founded his own command unit called Number 30 Assault Unit, a group of civilians tasked with learning in the field about the German nuclear programme, which sounds like a really good movie synopsis. The group was highly classified and operated relatively independently which sounds rather familiar to a certain double-O. During the D-Day invasion, Fleming was able to collect maps and reports on the countries they were about to invade, and with his help, these 12 men captured 300 German soldiers, destroyed their U-boats and took down their radar system. They also operated under guerrilla tactics, with false flag operations behind the enemy line. They also took part in the Dieppe Raid in 1942 to seize the Enigma machine to crack the infamous German code. Another mission had them capturing a load of German weapons. They found and extracted weapons which would prove fatal to the Allied war effort. And they infiltrated the German Warfare Science Department which housed many records of German technology and experimentations. He catalogued and transferred all of these records straight to London, where they used these records to win the war. Okay, maybe I can't claim that, but they definitely helped succeed in the war effort. He once took part in an operation called Golden Eye, in which he was in charge of setting up a backup spy ring in Spain. 
And he also later named his home in Jamaica Goldeneye, which soon became the name of one of his Bond books. 007 came from Fleming's knowledge of the intelligence world too, a German diplomatic code that British codebreakers snagged during the First World War. 0070. This codebreaking was a huge win for the British military intelligence, and went on to be the inspiration for Bond's slightly adapted 007 designation. The first James Bond novel, Casino Royale, is said to be partially inspired by a casino game Fleming played in Portugal. Though Bond won the final round, taking Le Chief for 80 million francs, Fleming lost his game and was cleaned out by a chief German agent at the table. But as most tales in history, we can't always believe everything, and his boss, Admiral Godfrey, claims that Fleming was actually only playing a Portuguese businessman, and only afterwards he fantasised about playing against German agents. So there we have it, seven big facts and a few bonus ones about the creator of James Bond. If you have any more secrets about Fleming, please share in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.